This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about what the Bitcoin halving is. I've been getting a lot of questions about this. There's some joke versions of this online. For example, American HODL here saying, explainer, the halving can be confusing. Here's what you need to know when the halving occurs in April, each Bitcoin in your wallet will split into 100 million satoshis. This is, of course, a joke. A Bitcoin is always comprised of 100 million satoshis. So this is what the halving is not. It's not like a stock split. The quantity of Bitcoin that you hold will not be doubled. It will not be cut in half. The price of Bitcoin will not be cut in half. It's nothing like that. In order to understand the Bitcoin halving, we need to remember how Bitcoin miners are paid. So when a Bitcoin miner or mining pool successfully mines a block, it receives two forms of compensation. Number one, it receives all the transaction fees paid by transactions that have been included in that block. And these transaction fees are based on supply and demand and set by the free market. Secondarily, the Bitcoin miner will receive the block subsidy, which is currently 6.25 Bitcoin or approximately $450,000. If we wanna take a look at the blockchain, here's the most recently mined block as I'm recording this. If we click on it, we can see what the fees look like. The total transaction fees are 0 0.206 Bitcoin. And then when you add the 6.25 Bitcoin miner subsidy, you end up with 6.456 Bitcoin, approximately $461,000. As we said, the block subsidy is currently 6.25 Bitcoin per block. The halving is when this is cut in half to 3.125 Bitcoin per block on approximately April 20th, 2024 of this year, when we reach block height 840,000. And we can see at the time of recording this, we're at 838,000. 383. This is what the halving, sometimes called the halvening, is. And this halving happens every 210,000 blocks. You get a new block in Bitcoin approximately every 10 minutes. And this halving is hard coded into Bitcoin software. 210,000 blocks, with each block being mined approximately every 10 minutes, works out to be about four years, which is why we have the halving approximately every four years. Bitcoin's halving also allows Bitcoin's final supply to asymptotically approach the maximum supply of 21 million coins by cutting the issuance of new coins every 210,000 blocks by half. Now the block subsidy started out at 50 Bitcoin per block when Satoshi launched Bitcoin in January of 2009. Block subsidy was cut in half to 25 Bitcoin at the first halving, November 28th, 2012. The second halving, it was cut to 12.5 Bitcoin on July 9th, 2016. And the most recent halving, which many of us were around for, was when the block subsidy was cut in half to 6.25 Bitcoin on May 11th of 2020. The halving year, interestingly enough, is always a US presidential election year and a leap year. We don't know whether this is by design or coincidence, but it is kind of fascinating to contemplate. I'll put a link in the description notes below to Clark Moody's Bitcoin dashboard, which has a lot of very interesting data. If you look at halving versus block time, we can see the different block times. So blocks on average come in every 10 minutes, but there is some variance. Sometimes they come in much more quickly. Sometimes they come in much more slowly. But if we get the average block time of 10 minutes, the halving will take place on April 20th of this year at 107 approximately. I'm not sure what time this is set to, but that gives you an idea of the day. Peak mean value will be achieved if the halving does take place on April 20th on 420 when Bitcoin's price is trading at 69,000. 420. Feel free to Google 420 and 69 if you don't get the joke. And remember, before you do so, that Bitcoiners are definitely a little bit of a weird bunch. If you're finding this video helpful, please help to support the channel by clicking the subscribe button, click the like button, the thumbs up, leave a comment, and also share this video with a friend or family member. Now, here's another thing that makes Bitcoin so special. Bitcoin's monetary policy that we've been discussing is built into the protocol. It's built into the software and it's programmatic rather than being discretionary. You can contrast this with this very primitive and corrupt form of monetary policy, which is the central bankers of today. For example, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve Open Market Committee with Jerome Powell at the center here. This is a very corrupt bunch of people. They have full discretionary control over the US interest rates and the money supply, and yet they seem to enjoy engaging in some insider trading. Robert Kaplan had a little problem with this, as did Clarita, as did Bostic, and these various central bankers have been forced to resign. 
This is a recent article from October of 2023, two years after the presence of the Dallas and Boston Federal Reserve banks left their jobs amid revelations they had traded on financial markets while helping to set monetary policy. An internal watchdog has yet to finish a probe into a scandal that has clouded the U.S. central bank's reputation as if it ever had a good reputation. So this is the problem with putting fallible human beings in charge of monetary policy. It's much better to have a protocol like Bitcoin take care of this. Bitcoin is ethical money for 8 billion humans. It's not central banker money. It's not money that's controlled by a small group of insiders who then use their power to either insider trade or to siphon off economic energy out of the economy and use it to fund out of control government spending, which is what's happening when the Fed prints up fresh new dollars and uses it to buy U.S. Treasury debt. By contrast, Bitcoin is fair money with a monetary policy that's open and transparent for all to see. This block subsidy, again, is hard-coded. It will keep getting cut in half every 210,000 blocks until it is less than a Satoshi. Remember, each Bitcoin is comprised of 100 million Satoshis. The last full Bitcoin will be issued approximately, depending on block time, January 30th, 2104, and then the last Satoshi, October 10th, 2137. These are just estimates because obviously the block time can be slower or faster. Now, right now, the Bitcoin network issues approximately 900 new Bitcoin every 24 hours. That's 6.25 new Bitcoin every 10 minutes times six 10 minute periods in each hour and then 24 hours in a day. After the 2024 halving in April of this year, only 450 new Bitcoin will be issued every day. So this is not at all a huge supply shock, considering that there are already about 19,677,000 Bitcoin in circulation. In fact, the difference between 900 and 450 is really not that much when viewed against the context of the current circulation. For example, the first halving in 2012, the daily issuance was cut from 7,200 per day to 3,600 Bitcoin per day, which was a much more significant supply shock, especially considering, considering that there were far fewer BTC in circulation at that time. So cutting the daily issuance by only 450 Bitcoin is not the same kind of supply shock. Nevertheless, the halving could still have a significant effect on Bitcoin's fiat price. For one thing, people talking about the Bitcoin halving is free advertising for Bitcoin, as I'm doing right now. And this is part of Satoshi's genius in creating this four-year cycle that also overlaps, as we said, with the U.S. presidential cycle and the leap year cycle. Now, having the block subsidy will also make older Bitcoin mining rigs much less productive, and it will be much more difficult for them because the reward may not even cover their electricity at that point. So some people may choose to sell their old Bitcoin mining rigs and buy Bitcoin with the proceeds. So this could also contribute to some upwards pricing pressure on Bitcoin as people exchange their Bitcoin mining rigs for fiat and ultimately for Bitcoin. The Bitcoin halving traditionally heralds a new bull market, but Bitcoin has already rallied quite sharply off the 15,500 bottom over the past few years. So the question is, will the bull market continue? I think probably thanks to increased visibility from the halving and a very strong ETF demand. Here we have Larry Fink pointing out that the BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs, which is just unbelievable when you think about it. Now, there's often FUD around a Bitcoin miner death spiral where the Bitcoin network implodes because miners can no longer afford to mine after the halving of the block subsidy. I don't think this is going to happen because Bitcoin is designed to be quite robust and quite anti-fragile. So what happens is if a Bitcoin miner can no longer afford to mine at 3.125 Bitcoin my, uh, block subsidy plus the transaction fees, that miner will choose to unplug his rig after some point of mining unprofitably because it's very expensive to mine. You use a lot of electricity. If enough miners unplug, the total Bitcoin hash rate for the network will fall and blocks will begin to come in more slowly than every 10 minutes. After 2016 blocks have passed, the Bitcoin protocol, the software will automatically adjust to make it easier to mine Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin's difficulty adjustment, which is part of Satoshi's genius. So those miners who have not unplugged after this difficulty adjustment will become more profitable. So the result, no minor death spiral. In fact, there's no Bitcoin price and there's no energy cost, either very high or very low, at which some but not all Bitcoin miners cannot continue to mine profitably. Bitcoin mining is an incredibly competitive industry. The least efficient Bitcoin miners will be forced to drop out of the race after the halving, leaving only the strongest and the most efficient 
Bitcoin miners. And this is a good thing. Bitcoin is designed to use energy that no one else wants and also to use it extremely efficiently. And it doesn't need an Elizabeth Warren to tell it what to do. Rather, the free market ensures increased energy efficiency, unlike government policies, which distort incentives and cause more damage than they prevent. You can ask yourself what has happened as the block subsidy has fallen from 50 Bitcoin in 2009 to 6.25 Bitcoin today. This might give us an idea of what we expect the Bitcoin network to do after the 2024 halving. Has the Bitcoin network and the miners been completely destroyed as their revenues have been cut, at least their revenues uh, denominated in Bitcoin? No, they have not. In fact, the Bitcoin hash rate for the network has been skyrocketing ever since 2009 and especially in the last few years. So this is not something to worry about a Bitcoin miner death spiral. Final note, this is another reason to keep Bitcoin's block size where it is today, to keep it limited because limited block space helps to create a robust transaction fee market for Bitcoin that can help it to transition from a network mainly funded by new issuance, in other words, the block subsidy, to a network that is funded fully by transaction fees. And these transaction fees will become increasingly important as the block subsidy continues to get halved every four years. When a block, when a Bitcoin block is not completely full, it's still possible for people transacting to bid only one sat, one satoshi per vbyte for their transaction. By contrast, when blocks are full, that's when we get the real transaction fee pressure ratcheting up. And this can help to compensate miners and offset the drop in revenue from the falling block subsidy. The last halving, as we said, was on May 11th of 2020. Bitcoin initially peaked about 11 months later. So May 11th, the price of Bitcoin was approximately 8,572 uh, at the halving. And then it went on to hit at the first peak, approximately 60, call it 63,000. And then it went on to 69,000 at the other peak. So we can still expect, I believe, some continued price appreciation here. Will history repeat right around the halving? Will Bitcoin's price do anything at that point? I don't really know. I don't have a prediction and neither does anyone else. This is something that's fundamentally unknowable. And I think anyone who claims to know what Bitcoin's price action is going to be in the days leading up to the halving and the days after the halving, they're either a fool who are over overestimating their abilities or just a liar trying to sell you a trading newsletter. I think it's best not to try to time the Bitcoin halving. What I prefer to do is just to continue to dollar cost average into Bitcoin, buying more Bitcoin whenever I have spare cash. I like to treat Bitcoin as my savings account, and I think this is the best way to profit from it rather than treating it as a trading account. Because Bitcoin is quite volatile, but fortunately, if you hold it for long enough, it's mostly volatile just to the upside. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.